Anne McCrith, uh, who is also a great fashion designer. Um, and we are going to be speaking about the evolution of fashion and also what African fashion designers need to do in order to promote fashion, not just on the African uh, platform, but also across the globe. And we all know that African fashion has been transforming over the years and as we go forward uh, we're yet to see Africa fully take the stage across the globe and that is what we're going to be talking about so the question we're asking is how best can African fashion designers promote their designs across the globe and we're using the hashtags fashion Africa and Africa speaks remember you can also tweet me at joy Doreen Bira or on the Twitter handle at KTN Africa speaks and at KTN Kenya and it's time for us us now to speak to our guests in studio and we'll be getting into the other segments of the show uh, during uh, the show as well and hoping that you can be able to contribute under the hashtags Africa Speaks and Fashion Africa. Now I'll start by introducing our guests like I did mention them earlier and McCreeth who is a fashion designer of Kikoromio uh, based here in Nairobi but her platform cuts across the African continent and the globe. Thank you so much Hi. for joining us. And uh, Masi, I, I can't stretch all the way to where you are, but okay. Masi McKenna is a fashion designer of Nakema uh, Fashion House. Thank you both for joining us. Yes. I'll start with Masi. Masi, how do you perceive Kenyan fashion today? It's growing. Mm -hmm. It is global. It is getting, I mean, it's, everyone is hearing about now Kenyan fashion designers. We are hearing them on the catwalks. Mm -hmm. It's we are getting to be known outside the um, the box. Initially, you just teach your clothes. Never gets on any TV show or anything. Mm -hmm. We never used to be known, but now we've gone global, and I like the way things are going. Right. And from back in the day up until today, when you started as a fashion designer, what was it like as compared to what it is now? Uh, one, people are not aware of what they wanted initially. Mm -hmm. You would have to take it out of them, literally, and try and show them designs. Mm -hmm. And actually, at first, they would want to try out and see if it really works. But now they are aware, they'll come with their designs, they will showcase, they are ready to show the world what, what it's all about. They are more aware of their calves mm -hmm. and the fabrics as well, yes. Great, and I'll now come to Anne. Uh, Anne McCrith, you, you have vast experience in the world of fashion, uh, both in Kenya and across uh, the African continent. What would you make of the evolution of African fashion? Or how would you even describe it? Well, I think um, it's really been growing everywhere, mm -hmm. and I think it's particularly growing on the, the international global platform. So you have um, designers from the continent getting into different niche markets mm -hmm. and influencing a lot the general fashion trends across the globe, whether they're African designers or not. Mm -hmm. And it's gone from, say, Africa being a seasonal trend to something that's just constantly there. Um, I read something interesting recently about Nigerian fashion and how it's become such a source for other global designers. Mm -hmm. It's become a source of inspiration to bring in new things because you know fashion's always looking for something new. So I think it's becoming very influential. Yeah. How long have you been doing fashion? And from the time you began, well, uh, well, I'm sure there's a lot of people would like to know that. Uh, from the time you began, what has the journey been like? Did you start by doing, you know, the more trendy, uh, you know, fashions, uh, looking at the global platform, or you actually had to start with the African fabric fashion? I had experience working, I trained in Italy and I had experience working in Milan and Barcelona mm -hmm. about five years before I came here and um, when I set up Kiko Romeo, I actually came for aid work but then I wanted to do development um, and I wanted to create jobs and I wanted to do it through my technical skills and create a fashion brand. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at a fashion brand I thought I want people to take pride in their culture, in their roots and I want to offer ready-made garments in African fabric. So Kiko Romeo from the very beginning had something African about it. It could right. be a plain garment but it had to then have handcrafted buttons. and. Today, that's still very much what Kiko Romeo is about. Anne McCreth as an individual, could I can design anything. You tell me you want something Chinese-inspired, no problem. It's just that Kiko Romeo as a brand chose to be that, chose to be a recognizable Kenyan brand, which could now go worldwide into international markets. That was the objective from the beginning. 
Right. And in just a short while, um, if you actually look at your screen, you can see, you know, the, the, the different uh, fashion designs from across Africa. Some of them are from West Africa. Some of them are from here in Kenya. And some of them have showcased at the African Fashion Week in New York. So, um, you know, African fashion is growing by the day. And like I mentioned, we are using the hashtag um, Africa Speaks and also Fashion Africa. Mercy, if I could get back to you. Um, the, the trends and the fashion designs that you have right now at your fashion house uh, do say a lot about the Kenyan culture. Do you have clients who come in looking for, uh, you know, designs of a specific uh, Kenyan culture or African culture? Just let us in on that. Yes, we have a lot of clients coming mm -hmm. in for African fabrics, basically. Mm -hmm. They can associate more with the African print. Most colors say up so much about um, different occasions. So we have people coming in not only for the, um, for the specific cultural background, say the Maasai, say the Kikuyus, mm -hmm. but basically the fabric speaking into their cultural backgrounds. Because right. um, you realize most of the fabrics, the African fabrics mean different things to different people. Mm -hmm. Red may mean warning or mm -hmm. other times danger or death. We mm -hmm. could go to greens that mean um, a rich environment and mm -hmm. all depends on what occasion we are looking at. Um, we've also had people coming in for different um, attires that symbolize different countries depending on what occasion we're in. We've had guys coming in for people coming in for um, say the um, Ugandan attire, mm -hmm. and they will fully want to dress in that, and many of them, Sudanese as well, we've mm -hmm. had people come in for um, mostly Maasai attires. They right. are doing very, very well, mm -hmm. yes. So the trends are growing by the day. Right, and uh, Anne, when it comes to the fashion runway, um, there are quite a number of challenges that designers do face, um, and in this case, we'll actually have to include the models, um, the number of challenges that they face. But I'm sure you actually, from your background, you could tell uh, what kind of challenges most of the African fashion designers do face. Um, and if you could let us in also on the model side, uh, what are some of the challenges in the fashion business? I think there are many. Um, I, perhaps one of the biggest ones is that the scale of production mm. is not big enough to be able to give the market a price that they would like. Mm -hmm. And so it's a bit of a vicious circle. It means that designers stay in niche markets rather than being able to sell mm -hmm. en masse. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I would like to see happening because clothing, obviously everyone wears clothing every day and the bigger the volume that we can sell, as I say, the prices then go down. Um, as regards fashion events, there's always the problem of funding for them and um, sponsorship. And you know we postponed FAFA actually from November to the 29th of March because of that, because mm -hmm. we just need a little bit of money, a little bit more money, because if you now run at a loss, that's not a very clever business strategy. So we had to change that one. Mm -hmm. um, as regards models, I find one of the more problematic areas is perhaps commercial modeling. I think that um, it's not that models are not being fully recognized and not recognized that this model really adds so much value to our brand that we really need to pay them more. And I've found that a lot of them are doing international, you know, in South Africa, the ad companies can't do this. Mm -hmm. There's very strict regulations in the modeling ag agencies. Here, um, the, 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 the rates have been set, but what happens is there's always someone else who wants to model. Mm -hmm. And so ad agencies and so on get round that and they actually end up giving very, very little money. Like even for a billboard that you're going to be on across Africa, if you divide what you get paid, maybe 90,000 after the agent fees, you divide that by 12, you're getting less than the minimum wage. And I'm saying 12 because it will be up for a year. It may even be up for more. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a big problem in that area, but what to do about it immediately, I'm not sure. Right. And going forward, Marcy, um, do you think that we're going to get to a time where Kenyans are completely, uh, you know, involved in, you know, African fashion? Because I'll give an example of countries like Ghana. 
uh, in Ghana every Friday all Ghanaians are supposed to go African so whether you are a TV personality or you are a minister or you you know whoever it is in Ghana every Friday they have the African Fridays where they all put on African fabric but do you think that we're gonna get to a point where we are seeing this cutting across the African continent uh, uh, from from your point of view um it could go, it has two ways to go, mm -hmm. depending on the availability and the price of the same. If you go to Ghana, the, the, they produce, they actually manufacture, they're the biggest manufacturers in Africa of um, either Kente, uh, Kitenge, Ankara or Batik. They manufacture so much of that. It is fair priced. When you come to Kenya, especially, you have to have a bit of money to spare, to make an extra. So mm -hmm. for everyone to go to that direction, you really have to I don't know, cheaping as a country, manufacture cheaper fabrics for mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. so they can all get to wear the same. Uh, in Africa, it could happen depending on the, the value of the authenticity of the fabric. It's so African, we have to embrace it fast as a community all around, yes. Great. Now, um, we are going to hear from some of the guys across Africa who are giving their opinion on the changing uh, fashion trends and how today we are seeing more Africans, uh, you know, embracing African fabric and African fashion. And we are now going to hear from Joshua Moturi, who is a Congo-based journalist and is now in Uganda or Kampala, and we'd like to hear what he has to say. Joshua, if you can hear me, what are the latest trends in the, in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Uganda as well? The trend is changing. Uh, throughout Uganda, we have noticed that during most of the ceremonies, for example, introduction and weddings, uh, there is a new trend which has come up of them using African attire. For example, uh, throughout Uganda, we have seen them using, uh, for example, Mshanana, which is uh, uh, the Rwandese also put it on, uh, Busuti and Gomesi. And also, uh, the new trend I've also seen is uh, the Nigerian attire, for example, the bubu has also come to Uganda and uh, most people are putting it on. That shows that uh, there is a really change towards uh, uh, Africans using their own attire and their own fashion at, uh, as a way of uh, daily life. And in Uganda, mostly, when it comes to most of the ceremonies, for example, the graduation, we have seen them uh, trying to put on the Maasai attire, the shuka, and also the ornaments during the graduation. This is a new trend which we are seeing coming on and it's being uh, picked up mostly. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Joshua, for speaking to KTN Africa Speaks, and he's actually letting us in on how uh, Ugandan fashion trends are now cutting across, involving the Rwandan trends as well. But let's take up some of the responses we're getting on Twitter. Um, we're having Ashikoye, who is saying, uh, no, as, as we had asked the question, how best do you think uh, African fashion designers can promote African fabric acro across the globe? And Ashikoye is saying, no. Um, African fashion designers do not appreciate fashion that much and the influx of everything foreign that is a secondhand clothes and synthetic materials uh, one are actually letting the African fashion industry down and we're also having Kip Churcher who is saying yes because people are starting to love their cultures from which they're coming from and therefore people are appreciating African fashion more. We're also having uh, one that is coming in here from S Vets M1 who is saying yes there are more and more Africa print being designed and one especially vintage and uh, also we're having another coming in here from Pinkett Triple H, who is saying, in Rwanda, the biggest thing you can ever talk about is African fashion because Rwandans do not appreciate uh, foreign fashion that much. And those are some of the tweets coming through the hashtag Africa Speaks and Fashion Africa. Uh, continue to let them in. Also on Facebook, you can reach us through Africa Speaks. Um, I'll just get back to our guests here who are Anne McCrith, uh, fashion designer of Kiko Romeo. And also we have Masi McKenna, who is of the Nakema Fashion House. And uh, Aaron, if I, if I just might get back to you, going forward, what do you think, because I think fashion models are paid less compared, to, in Africa, are paid less compared to the international models. Um, what do models in Africa need to do to get to the international stage, get to be paid just as much as, uh, you know, the international fashion models are paid? 
I think we need more regulation in this market. Mm -hmm. And whether you're talking the what we were talking about just now on fabrics or what it's, I mean, fashion can be a huge earner in the GDP. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking models or clothing production, cotton farmers getting into cotton fabric and so on. So this is an economic issue and we actually need government to take interest. We need government to represent us. We need government to, if you know, they're going to functions to wear Kenyan made garments mm -hmm. and actually show those internationally with pride about what is actually happen happening here. And then to help us with through industrialization, look at how we're we going to improve our manufacturing so we can reach the mass, mass, mass market and with that distribution, how does it get to the consumer? Now going back onto the model, this is very true. As I said before, South Africa has regulation. So if you go and work in the South African market, there are strict rules about what models get paid. Mm -hmm. um, South Africa is often a stepping stone to now going international. Right. Going directly from here to um, Europe or the US, some people have done it. Ajuma, of course, is the best known that's done it. Others have also managed. But it does, it, it's a little bit tricky. Um, I know Ajuma is just setting up a, a new agency directly in partnership with an agency in Paris, mm -hmm. but they're not going to take many models. You really have to be at the top of your game and they, you have to be a fr what they define as a fresh face. They're always looking for something new. Um, right now, Joe Casilla, who uh, actually w has won prizes as a model here, is mm -hmm. trying to go international. It's not an easy task. It's also very much about what's the trend of the moment in models. And we don't define that if you're looking at a global market. It's right. those markets that will define what's the look that they now want. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I don't know, there are various agencies, um, but most of them are not internationally linked and it's just not a given. You don't just automatically go from here out there. It's a lot of work. You know, you need to make your networks, you need to do your research, you need to see what are the call, what do they call the open call times. Most model agencies around the world, maybe you can go in from 10 to 12 in the morning, it will be on the website, it will say what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And then are you looking for catwalk modeling, runway, or are you looking for commercial? Commercial is always easier runway it's very specific and you also have to have a thick outer skin so when you go in and the designer doesn't take you it's not because there's something inherently wrong with you or how you look right. it's just because for whatever reason for their collection they want this and they don't want that and then of course we have to add in the other thing of being a black model mm -hmm. it is much more difficult and that's something that as a fashion industry in Africa we really have to continue pushing for our black models to have a world stage and mm -hmm. um, certainly we're about to do a show in London 21st of November right. and we're very specifically making sure that a high percentage of who goes down the runway is black but yeah, it's tougher for, I mean, it really is tougher for those models. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Mercy, I'll get back to you in terms of uh, the trends. For instance, what are the latest trends in Kenya at the moment? Do you think people are going in for um, what they see on TV and then transforming that with, with an African fabric touch? What exactly are the latest trends when it comes to African fabric in Kenya? Wow, many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have evolved. People are just... Mm -hmm thinking outside the box, they're looking at the TV, they're looking at the superstars, they are look, they're going through the internet, downloading designs. So we have seen an increase of uh, people translating from the normal business mm -hmm. suits to a touch of Ankara somewhere, a touch of Batik. We are seeing more business suits also transformed into now a more dressy look, especially for the women. They're wearing more dresses that are either right. the upper bit is African and the bottom is um, a plain fabric to look relevant and still connect with your nature. Um, we have also realized that is us, Nakima Fashion House, the trends, the, the, the business of Ankara fabric or African fabrics mm -hmm. has really increased as opposed to the many other years where we used to do a lot of business official suits. We have so much more on dresses flowing, mm -hmm. um, party short dresses we have uh, red carpet dresses still kitenga is qualifying for that so most people are associating with it yes great and internationally are there specific uh, fabric trends that are making it global from the african continent or are there specific things that you know international fashion designers look out for coming in from africa 
I think we've got lots of ways of influencing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, today's an actually brilliant day for Kenyan fashion. We've opened on the London High Street, a pop-up shop for three weeks. Um, under FAFA, we're working with a retailer, Sapelli, mm -hmm. and there's a whole lot of brands. So we've taken their garments, they're on the high street, they're in the window. Now, of what we sent, London picked out in particular the Maasai prints. Um, those are in a trend right now there. Mm -hmm. If you go on Azos Africa, there's a collection that's been made using our regular shuka fabric mm -hmm. uh, for this winter season. Right. Um, but at the same time, waxes are very, um, you know, the Kitengis, Ankara, whatever. There's a big variety. I think probably it's more a colour trend because people are still understanding what is African fabric. Um, so maybe it's more a colour trend in line with the rest of the colour trends of the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I say, the, the Maasai one is still very strong. Yeah. Great. Now, uh, let's go to Facebook, where we're seeing more opinion coming in. Uh, we're having Hans Pitan Kassa from uh, Ghana, who is saying, if, you ever, if you've ever been to any fashion show in South Africa, you will see tons of African fashion products on international runways. I think the success stories of these African brains are partly due to the fact that citizenry have realized beauty in what we have in our own backyard. And with the optimal touch of creativity, people will never be ashamed to don what they know is true to them and uh, he winds up by saying god bless africa and well um i think we've come close to the end of the platform but i would like to hear the final remarks of our guests today going forward what do you make out of african fashion or the african fashion industry uh, i'll start with mercy we would want to grow mm -hmm. let us be given the platform let the government support, mm -hmm. let everyone else support us, we are willing to go. Right. And uh, Anne, your final remarks? For me, I'd like to see distribution channels um, improved so that we can take the things on scale to market. And I would like to, yeah, the, again, the same thing on the support. It's also important that we build brands because right now we're in a position where international fashion giants are looking at Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, the Zara's, the H&M's, they're like, how can I get into Africa? Mm -hmm. And I think the brands that are here, we need to strengthen what we're doing. We need to be people people to actually negotiate with, people to partner with, to grow this economy. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't like to see them come in and swamp the market and everything dies. We need to put ourselves in that strong position of leveraging our brands. Great. And well, uh, we've been speaking to Anne McCrith, who is a fashion designer for Kiko Romeo, uh, right here in Kenya. Her designs cut across the African continent, and we've also speaking to we've also been speaking to uh, Masi McKenna of the Nakima Fashion House. Thank you both for uh, speaking to us here on Africa Speaks on KTN. Now uh, we'll finish up the show, especially for those of you who missed the eclipse on the third of November. Uh, Click is going to be reversing that historical moment for you. I'm sure there's thousands uh, of people who did miss it. But as seen from the Earth, a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the sun and the Earth. And that is what we're here to show you as we wind up the show. Just take a look at this. From the Earth, a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the sun and Earth and the moon fully or partially blocks the sun. This can happen only at new moon when the sun and the moon are in conjunction as seen from Earth in an alignment referred to as syzygy. In a total eclipse, the disk of the sun is fully obscured by the moon. In partial and annular eclipses, only part of the sun is obscured. This amazing shot of the particular solar eclipse on November 3rd was a spectacular view for Africans in parts of the continent. Well, those are some of the pictures that we did capture from the solar eclipse. But now we'll wind up with Web City and we'll take a look at some of the stories that are making news both in Kenya or in East Africa as well as around the entire continent.
Africa will start voter registration for the 2014 national elections this Saturday and Sunday. The Independent Electoral Commission will host registration at more than 22,000 stations across the country on Saturday and Sunday. The elections will be held on a day from April to July next year to elect the new parliament, which will then elect a new president in South Africa. As the largest economy in Africa, South Africa has a population of more than 53 million people. On Friday, South African police announced they have beefed up security to ensure a smooth voter registration this weekend. Tanzania's President Jakar Kikwete has said his country strongly believes that economically strong East African community will help to achieve a secured, stable and politically united East Africa. President Kikwete was reacting to recent development of meetings of presidents of Uganda, Kenya and Rwanda on railway infrastructure, port and pipeline projects among them, distancing Tanzania and Burundi presidents, both active members of the EAC from the sessions. The Tanzanian leader affirmed his country's commitment to the East African community but stated would follow the gradual integration processes as stipulated in the treaty signed in 1999 Customs Union, Common Market, Monetary Union and eventually the EEA Political Federation. And we've come to the end of the show this afternoon. Thank you all for your comments, you know, that are still streaming through social media under the hashtags Africa Speaks and Fashion Africa. I could see some of them coming through, but unfortunately, I don't have time to go through them. But this conversation continues online. And in case you want to reach uh, the fashion designers I just hosted in studio, uh, you can reach uh, Anne McCrith on Twitter at Anne McCrith. And also um, Masi McKenna, you can be able to reach her on Facebook. Uh, just go in there and search for Nakima Fashion House and you'll be able to get some of her designs. And uh, for um, Anne McCrit's Fashion House, you can actually go on to Kikoromeo Africa. Is that it? Twitter's at Kikoromeo Africa. Facebook's Kikoromeo. Mm -hmm. Great. And well, we've come to the end of the show with that. Uh, the conversation continues online. Hashtags Fashion Africa and Africa Speaks. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. Tweet me at Joy Doreen Bira. For now, good afternoon and thank you for watching.